Amen. I do have a word I've been working on a little bit. Um, I want to, uh, I don't know if I want to catch us up or if I just want to make us aware of what we're seeing. Amen. Aware of what we're seeing. We saw a lot of uh, psycho perversion with transgender now being forced upon us that we get so-called down low R&B brothers and messing around with boy girls and it's becoming so weird you wonder what is the next thing but there's an origin to this and we're headed somewhere amen we're headed to a place amen now i believe according to galatians 6 and 6 and then you read that don't just hear me say galatians 6, 6 go read it uh it says that um that if that 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 that, that, that if you are instructed in the word then you must share all good things with your instructor. I told you, I don't. I believe in giving by obligation. In other words, I believe if you receive, you give. And I believe because you're receiving from this ministry, you, you know, realize the, that, that we've put uh, these free videos on YouTube for years. And I've just, you know, and this video, I'm, listen, we get all around the world, this message is blessing people all around the world. Everybody, I mean, I, I can't tell you how many calls and emails we get uh, talking about how God is transforming people's lives, bringing deliverance and healing and restoration. And many people are saying they don't even have a word like that in our city. And, and, and so, um, and which is something else that we're gearing up for to, to do some church planning. But anyway, um, but uh, if you are receiving from this ministry, the Bible instructs you to share. Uh, or so back into what is feeding you. So if I'm feeding you as a pastor, as a man of God, I don't care if you got a church or a pastor, uh, but if you're coming to, to and receiving from our channel and receiving from these videos, which are being provided to you for free, then you are obligated to sow back and share back with this ministry because you are being fed. That's the biblical principle. That's the principle of Galatians 6 and 6. Galatians 6 and 7 goes on to say, uh, don't be deceived. God is not mocked. It's talking about sowing into a man of God. We use that scripture wrong. When, whatever you sowing into a man of God, that and that only shall you also reap. If you sow sparingly into who's feeding you, then you're going to reap sparingly. But when you are liberal to those who are sowing the spiritual food into you, then, uh, then, then you will reap. Uh, liberal and so uh, it's very important how you take care of an anointing how you support the anointing and anointing that's, that's sown into your life don't leave and I'm not just talking about me don't ever take men of God for granted somebody who is anointed sowing that word into your life don't ever uh, uh, mistreat that or, or take or be common with that or feel that you don't have a part to play in their support because the Bible says if I if, if, if I sow into you my carnal what is it that I reap your if I sow into you my spiritual what is it that I reap your carnal? In other words, we're supposed to have a reciprocating relationship. If you come to YouTube and you're receiving from those videos, then the Bible obligates you to begin to sow to so back to sustain my life. If the spiritual word of God is sustaining your life, then the Bible says you must share all good things with me, meaning your natural things should sustain my life. That's how you build a relationship. Uh, with a man of God and that's how the anointing flows into your life so that's why it's so important for you to uh, to understand obligation giving you know I don't like all of the gimmicks and tricks and playing the games I believe that if you're receiving the word if, if yokes are being destroyed if God is removing your burdens and, and, and your life is getting better then that means you're receiving the word the anointed word is breaking the yokes and uh, you have an obligation at that point this message is to make you aware to say, watch, watch. Your, children. your children. Amen. Watch your children. Amen. The agenda is for your children and even for you, but especially watch your children. Amen. You want to make sure that you know what's going on in the lives of your children. Everything is aimed at your children. They have, they have, they have over-sexualized children to the level of that it's normal for a child to be into illicit sex uh, before the time they are out of their teenage years because they are pushing an agenda. The agenda is old, it's not new, it's Satan's same old bag of trips wrapped up uh, with a new, um, 
egg roll skin. <laughs> I don't know why I would use that. But basically, it's the same feeling, but it's just a new outer shell. And we have to be aware as, the, as people of God because we're going to literally have to protect our children. Those of you all with babies and young children, you need to be watching those daycares and who's around your child. Say amen. What is the philosophy? Because the problem is we have separated perversion into categories and not realize it's all one perversion. We have separated it. They've done a great job at categorizing sin so that we would think this is not so bad as this. What you don't know, the spirit behind this is the same spirit behind that. Eventually, this will become that. But we have to, first of all, uh, normalize that so you'll accept this. And that's what's happening. So I don't trust none of it. Any of the alphabet sexual things are all the same to me because the driving spirit is Satan using a perverted person to destroy the lives. Once you have been tampered with sexually early, before you have an understanding of what sex is, you will have automatic complex for life unless you come under the blood and begin to be rebuilt or re-stitched or the Bible says, the thief on the cross said, remember, I mean put me back together again because I've been broken. You got what I'm saying? So unless you uh, uh, get, the, get the restoration of the blood of Christ that begins to restore your mind, your spirit, your body to the correct place. This is the reason why the Bible says that once you get Christ, you become a new creature. All old things are passed away. Behold, means look up. All things become new. We need these new things when we get saved to, to, to destroy or to uh, take away the things that were added to us in sin or when things that were placed upon us when we were too young to understand. Say amen. amen. We are all victims in some way of someone's sexual perversion. Amen. What I mean by that is we are all victims based upon we grew up in a, in a home where sexual, uh, where fornication was happening constantly and we were affected by that. Some of us grew up under uh, men that touched us or molested us or women that touched us or molested us. Say amen. amen. Uh, we grew up under the, we, we are victims of this because none of us have learned what I call right sex. Oh, I'm talking about that today. Amen. Right sex, meaning the sex that God created for the purpose of um, of, 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 of love between a, a female and a male that motivates in the production of more females and males. Are y'all there? Are y'all there or not there? Y'all act like y'all sleepy this morning, so I guess I'm going to shock you as much as I can. You will be shocked today. Amen. So the title of my message is called The Fires of Sodom. Subtitle, they gave a boy for a harlot. The fires of Sodom. This is the reason why the judgment of Revelations is a, is a judgment of fire. Because certain sins require fire. This is the reason why nuclear war will be on the horizon. Because it's going to judge certain sin. If God judged Sodom and Gomorrah for what they were doing, how much more is he going to have to judge us for what we are doing? or what we are allowing, or what we are tolerating. The fire of God is coming, and not the Holy Ghost. I'm talking about real fire is coming. Look at the craziness that's being spoken. The, the, just to remind me of two bullies on the, on, on, the, on the playground, throwing rocks as if they just really throwing rocks, knowing that if they launch what they've got, it's the destruction of the world. But we have the psychopaths in office to judge the world with their psychopathism. Their man's psychopathism will be the judgment of Armageddon or be the judgment of Revelations. Are you there? So the, so the reason for the fire is the acceptance or the exaltation of perversion. 
Perversion is something that is against God's original intent. Come on, I taught a little bit of this before. But I want you to know the reason why these, these wars and rumors of wars that Christ was talking about in Matthew are happening and are going to continue to happen until we climax into a major event that will cause man to recognize the judgments of God. Y'all there? Come on, give my title, bruh. The fire of Sodom. They gave the boy a boy for a harlot. Go over to Joel chapter 3. I know y'all can't see that all the way, but it's in Joel 3. Get your Bible. Don't be lazy. Amen. Don't depend upon my PowerPoint. Come on to me, bro. I'm going to work you now. Joel chapter 3. I want to show you something. A lot of what I'm going to teach may not be in chronological order, meaning it, I, I, I'm teaching it based on the thoughts that I was having at the time. Amen. But this is a deadly... See, the... The end game has always been pedophilia. That's always been the end game. All of this sexual revolution, pornography, even homosexuality was a, um, if you understand chess, say chess. You know the real fight is between the king and the king. Everybody else is fighting on behalf. So you might have the knights over here battling it out, but the, they fighting for the interest of the king. You got what I'm saying? Even the queen is fighting for the interest of the queen. Never understood how the queen has more power on the chessboard than the king. I don't understand that. That just, that just come to show you. But everybody is fighting, meaning the war is between the two kings. Everybody in, in their kingdom is fighting a fight and you may have small skirmishes between pawns and pawns, or the bishops and the bishops are fighting. Say amen. But they're all fighting the same war. Say amen. amen. So we have many wars of perversion that we have fought to get perversion pushed or normalized. There are steps to, there are steps to judgment, meaning that we've had many battles. If you go back, I don't have time, I'm not going to go real far, but I'll give you a little, little bit of understanding. If you go back uh, to the women's liberation movement, that was a battle that was pushing an agenda that was ultimately going to, going to, going to bring about the true war of the king. That's just one skirmish that had to be fought. But once that was won, it moved, the, it moved you know, on chess, you're moving forward. You're constantly moving forward. An army moves forward. Because if you retreat, you're losing. You got what I'm saying? So that moved the army forward. Are y'all there? We had, uh, if you go back before that, you had something called public uh, education. That, by taking the children from the parents and teaching them the ideology of the king, then you move the board forward. These are small skirmishes, but as these small battles are fought, it's working toward the overall goal. Do you get what I'm saying? Now, we are seeing the men, it's not, they're almost, we're, we're almost there at the final battle or what the intended, the intendant of the king really is. You got what I'm saying? The intendant of the king was sexual perversion on every level, especially with children. Children was always the intent and target of the king. And these, these bishops and rooks and knights are your elite peoples and politicians and trillionaires that are working on behalf of the king to bring about his intent, which is really to have sex with children, not sex to destroy the innocence based upon Genesis 3 that the innocents raised properly become the crushers of the kingdom of Satan. Amen. Come on here. Amen. Amen. So I have to destroy, say destroy. destroy. There is no greater destruction than when a man 
violates. The man is the protector. The man is the covering. The man is where you get security. The man was there for safety. He's the warrior. He fights on behalf of the children and the family. He is the first idea of masculinity. If the relationship with the man is right, then the whole the, the, the child has a a, 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 a a correct understanding of leadership, future, marriage, home, money, business, God, church. But if I can get the man to violate, meaning go against his natural function, which was to protect, then I will develop a complex in the prophesied generation that will crush the head of the serpent. Come on. Simple warfare. Not deep. Simple. You think it's deep because of the many skirmishes and battles. Meaning you talk as many topics that we fight about, but it's all over the same war. Talk back to me. So, say the man. Now, so this is the reason why you have this push of sexual deviancy that is uh, targeting um, uh, boys. Say boys. No, not men, not women, and really not girls. Boys was always the target. Oh, yeah, now get what I'm going to say today. Boys were always the target. The Bible says the warfare is against everything that pisseth against the wall. That's where the warfare is. The battle is with the woman. But the war is over the boy. The Bible says in Genesis 3 that the woman and the serpent will be warring over the sea. But the war is over the for the boy. The battle is... It's, a, it's, it's with the woman because she predicts or carries the seed and whatever she is is what the seed will be. Amen. Basically how she lives her life will determine the seed because the, the woman is the first nurturer and teacher of the seed. So he wars, he, he battles with the woman but the war is over the sons or the men that will crush the head of the serpent Say amen. amen. Come on. Say simple warfare. Simple warfare. Now, so, so the battle, so the war was always over the men. Y'all there? Amen. It's always over the men. Now, let me show you something in Joel. I got a little ground to cover. Is, is Y'all there today? Amen. Are y'all getting anything today? Come on, wake up. Wake up. This is going to affect you. It's affecting you now. It's going to affect you. Your children are being affected in these dens of homosexuality called public school. All they're doing is teaching them to be gay. That's all they're doing. That's why yeah, they can't even read. They graduate and they can't read. But they know, uh, they know what oral sex and anal sex is, but they can't read. I said it in church because they're teaching these kids that. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You never ask, why do you need trigonometry? Why do you need calculus? But you can't balance a checkbook. You can't cook an egg. But you know calculus. Never going to use it. Been in construction 20 years. I have, I have, I have, only thing I have used in anything I have learned might have been frac early fractions. Which is basic algebra. And even I don't, you don't even know that, need to know that. Really, all you need to know is the reader's tape measure. But they gave us 12 years of school, and then you never asked, what is this? Why do I need all of this? Then you graduate. Why do you think you can't get a job? You didn't go to school to learn about, about a, a, a building success or a business or financial wealth. You went to school to be indoctrinated with the, with the ideology of the king that owns the system. So what do you know? You know how to dress. You know how to be popular. You know how to wear your hair. Say amen. amen. You know about boyfriend, girlfriend. Yeah, yeah. You know about abortion. Right. Yeah, yeah. Are y'all there or not there? Yeah. You know about mean girls. 
You know about bullying, being bullied, say amen. amen. But you know nothing about life. Amen. And that's what's wrong with y'all. That y'all think y'all got degrees and y'all somehow smart, but you only smart in the system that honors that degree. And they had to make a system to make you think the degree was worth something. Yeah. Or you would feel cheated for paying all that money for something you can't really use in the real world, which is real money and real finance. You only went to school with, to get a degree to be a teacher in that field because that's all the degree is worth. Why do you think people keep going back to school? Getting loans and grants and be in debt for life yes. with something that cannot produce. Oh, no, let me get off on that, y'all. Let's go. Are you against education? Yeah. If it ain't got God in it, yeah. I know it's foolishness. Yeah, it ain't going to lead to number foolishness. You got a master's degree but don't know that a child is in your womb. You think that's tissue. Thinking they were wise, they became fools. All right. Let's go to Joel 3. Y'all ready to go? Come on. Y'all ready to go? This is the judgments. This is before judgment. For behold, y'all there? In those days, 3-1, in that time when I shall bring again the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem. Look at me. Who's that? Us, Judah and Jerusalem. Even if, if, even if it ain't, even if it ain't be it based on being Hebrew, it's based on believing in Christ. Amen. It's still you. Amen. If you believe in Christ. Amen. Say amen. amen. The real Christ. Amen. Are y'all there? Amen. I will gather all nations and bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat and will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage. So they really, they doing it to everybody, but they focused on, on a people. Yes. Say amen. Yes. Whom they have scattered among the nations and parted my land. Y'all know what they're doing already in the Middle East and Africa because some of the land of the Most High is in Africa. Amen. And they can't listen. Why is he doing this? Why is he bringing them down to Armageddon? Why is he doing it? Because they did what? No, 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 no. Because they, they scattered his people among the nations, part of his land. Now we usually stop there but keep going and... They've cast lots for my people and have given a boy for a harlot. These people that have done this have perverted the, the nature of the Most High by giving a boy, having boys doing what girls do. So the time, this is last day talking, and the time that this is, when this Armageddon or Valley of Jehoshaphat will be filled with, 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 with the enemies of God, will be around the time they start giving boys for girls. Amen. Do you understand what I'm saying? This proves, that's why I said all I need is the book to prove where we are and who we are. I just need the book. Because the prophecies tell me, say amen. amen. So the Most High is looking at this garbage. And he's looking at it saying they are now going against nature. Anytime man tempers with nature, they begin to produce Satan's seed. So that's when he judges. In Genesis 6, when the fallen angels came down and taught men how to splice DNA, start having sex with animals, they began to rewrite or recreate or pervert the original intent, which was male, female, man, woman, and they start creating hybrids. God said, uh oh, time to judge it, because now they're messing with my building blocks. When Abraham had these two angels visit him, and they went down to Sodom and Gomorrah, the Most High saw how the men were now burning so much for other men, he said, this is not going to create nothing but 
perversion, which is the seed of the serpent or the seed of Satan or the children of rebellion, I can't do nothing now but judge it. So fire consumed the, that culture. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Do y'all got that? So Joel's talking about the last days where they're going to be uh, giving a boy for a harlot that don't mean that a woman would be bound a boy to have sex with a boy, not a woman to be a man. Men are the ones that buy harlots. And a girl will be sold for wine that they may drink. Are y'all there? Amen. Now, it didn't say give a man for a harlot or a girl for wine or, or a woman for wine. It said boy. It said girl. Giving you the connotations talking about children. Amen. The time that you see boys, children, being, uh, being uh, sexual pleasure being fulfilled by children for adults. This is when the Valley of Jehoshaphat or the days of Armageddon will begin to happen. Oh, y'all don't know how close we are. That's why you don't see nothing wrong with it. But the more they do it, the judgment is coming faster for you too. Amen. Say amen. Why? Because when they begin to go against the natural order of the Most High, the Bible says the earth begins to travail. The earth starts to fight against man. What do you think Christ is talking about? Earthquakes in diverse places and floods. and That's the earth fighting. Recognizing that you all are perverting. Y'all are perverting the plan of creation. The earth wants to swallow you up and get rid of you too. Too much. Go to Genesis 19. Real quick. Keep it on me, bro. Genesis 19. Come on, I got a ways to go. Can I help you today? Amen. That's why I don't do no bunch of playing around when it comes to this word. I don't, I don't make no allowances for the flesh or sin. Amen. We call it what it is. Amen. Ain't no little hookup, ain't no affair, ain't no friends on the side, ain't no friends with benefits, say amen. amen. Ain't no little bit, ain't no voyeurism, ain't no look but don't touch, say amen. amen. It's all perversion, it's all sin. And unless we check it where we check it, it's gonna grow and, and, and produce the will of the king. Say amen. amen. And if you a sister and you are into this type of stuff where you may just be fornicating, know that the guys that you invite inviting in are the ones amen. that are going to fulfill the will of the king by turning your daughter or your son out. Right. Y'all heard what I said. Amen. Look at this. Come on, Genesis 19. Come on, bro. It says 4. But before they laid down, it's talking about Sodom and Gomorrah. When the men, when angel, Abraham brought the angels down to Sodom, the men of the city, say the men of the city, the put on me, bro. Say the men of the city. The Even the men of Sodom. Say the men of Sodom. The men of Sodom. Where we get the word Sodomy. Yeah. The word Sodomy. Yeah. Very very telling that the word Sodomy comes from the word Sodom which was the place that God judged with fire for two men performing Sodomy. So if Sodomy was right. Oh, See when you get into the pleasure system and get into what they like to do, that's when the resistance comes. But if Sodomy was right, why is fire falling? on people that were performing sodomy. I said it because all it takes to buy says a little leaven, leaven a whole lump. So, so if I can get a man to do to a woman what he would do to a man, is he not in agreement with sodomy? Which we push the chessboard a little bit further. Oh, y'all don't want to talk no more. Y'all don't want to talk no more. Y'all don't want to talk no more. I feel you now. Don't want to talk no more. You start getting into your things, and you don't even know why you like that thing. Why do you even like it? It's usually because it was either performed on you, and the spirit was transferred to you, or that was your first understanding of counter with sex, and you're perverted, meaning not thinking right when it comes to sex. You don't know that, oh, uh, y'all don't want to go. Simple biology. 
simple biology. Some perverted cat was doing that and getting off on you, and now your wires have been crossed that you don't understand simple sex with love involved. That means the keys and locks fit. So you got to do extra stuff that you think is right because this chick might be into that. Y'all don't want to talk to me about this. That's only because she don't know no better either. Are y'all there? <laughs> Come on, y'all there? Especially if you learn sex from the internet, which this generation did. We learned it from books and Playboy, but y'all learned it from the internet. That phone in your pocket. Talk back to me. And have you ever thought about that? Why would God judge this Sodom? Well, we get the word sodomy. They, they use the word sodom to base to, 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 they, they their actions on that name. Talk to me. They done come past the house where Abraham took the angels when he took them in Lot's house. They done come past the house where the angels went in Lot's house. Y'all got that? Y'all read it? Both, say both, old and young. So you got old men and young men, or boys, that was into Sodomy. All the people from every, come on, from every, so that means the whole city. All the old men and the young boys were coming to have sex with two men in the open. Is it any wonder that the judgment was so harsh because there was a culture that was okay with the unnatural or the unseemly? I'm sure they appealed to the, to, to the, to the human empathy of loving people for who they are. and They went through the tolerance too. But the real goal was to fulfill demonic gratification. And they would have been okay. But when they tried to take these two angels, and the whole, the Bible says, the whole city came out. That meant there, what was the judgment that the Most High told Abraham, if I can find. Abraham went down from 50, but he said, if I can find. But the Bible says every man couldn't find nobody that was righteous. He got down to 10 and couldn't find 10 because wasn't nobody left for life. So the whole city showing up to partake in gang rape proved the point of the most high. That they so perverted. Ain't no rehabilitation. Ain't no talking to them. I know y'all don't like that because y'all got little bobbies and little, little, little quans in y'all family. They so perverted. I said it. Why is everybody caring about these perverted cats and y'all ain't caring about the kids that they molested? There was a guy, this little young guy, I guess he's a comedian, but I caught a little clip of it. He was on a breakfast club and he said, he told them, he said, if a transgender tricked me, I'm gonna kill him. Don't you know everybody got mad? Now, in the transgender manual, <laughs> the real goal is to trick straight men. They don't want gay men. What do they call it, baby? We was watching something about it, and they said so something they call it, once they get, once a straight man find them out, there's a word for that. It's not catfish. It's not catfish. No, it's another word. It's something they say. I can't remember what it was. But basically, the esteem of the transgender is hurt when they are found out by a straight man. Because their esteem, their perverted esteem, 
is fulfilled when they can pass or trick a straight man. That gives them affirmation. So this is the reason why you hear these, 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 these reports of, of like, it's an up spike in the murders of transgenders. But you don't know why, you just think dudes are killing gay cats. No, what's happening is, is these boys that have been taking hormone shots and pills from little bitty kids because their mamas never okay with this. They look so much like girls and because the makeup thing has made them pass for y'all. That's, that's the only, listen, why do you think they put up some fool like Nicki Minaj? Somebody with fake butts and fake breasts because, and the butt don't look right, it don't look real. There's no way your butt can be hearing with no hips. That automatically tells you that it don't look right. Butt after her, but leg gets little. It don't, you know it's wrong, but the reason why they push Nicki Minaj because a transvestite can look like her. So they got people lusting weird plastic. Because if you lust Nicki Minaj, then a dude with that in his butt with some fake breasts will look the same. Put enough makeup on him. Why? Because they blurred the line. They don't want you to understand. I always said they were using our sisters. Because I can't understand how our women are the most beautiful in the natural state. But they, 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 but they paint themselves like a clown. And I kept saying, what is, the, what is this makeup kicked all of a sudden? And I realized what it was. I thought back to the Egyptians. Well, I really thought back to the fallen angels that the Bible says, the, fallen, well, the, the book of Enoch said the fallen angels, Genesis 6, taught women how to put on makeup. Didn't know why that was important until I understood Egyptians. And if you notice, if you look at Egyptian hieroglyphs, if you look at the face, you don't know if that's a man or a woman. Because all of them painted their face and eyes the same way. See, I give a boy for a harlot. I'm going to turn a man into a woman. So you won't even know. You won't, you'll be looking at this thing. And it'll look like Beyonce. Close enough. So what's happening is these brothers is in the club with maybe two, one too many drinks. And this thing is twerking and just doing feminine things. Stuff. He don't understand why this thing that's so pretty is so over eager to go home with him. Because a real pretty woman ain't going to just go home with you. But this thing. I said it. It's going out live. It's screaming. This thing wants to go. Eager to go. And because uh, he's impaired, <laughs> I want to give the brother out. He's impaired. He didn't know that Adam Dow, he didn't, he's impaired. The hands are big. He didn't look at all. And he gets to the place of wherever, and he gets the shaft. <laughs> now he's upset because in his mind, <laughs> I'm gay now. <laughs> so he can't handle it. And what, he, what they dying over is the tricking part. Right, right, right. If you'd have told him straight up, he wouldn't did, but you tricked the man. Amen. Talk to me. So when we see a culture where you got young, I mean old, got these old pedophiles, which is who's passing these laws. Oh, I ain't even got into what I'm going to say. And then you got young, young men, before the age of puberty, they are letting them decide that you are a girl. Are y'all there? And so this is the culture that we need before judgment. Y'all got this? Say the fires of Sodom. Let's go here. Come on, bro. So, ped pedestry or pedophilia. Now, I want you to Google. Don't do it now because you'll not listen. If you Google these terms, 
uh, you will see how they are flooding the search engine with sites condoning and not condemning pedophilia. Look at me. Years ago, if you was to type in pedophilia, you would get article after article of the mental disorder and the evils of it. But Google, because they complicit with all of this, this is who's running these companies and pedophile, that they have made it where they, they push, they can push back all of the stuff they don't want you to see, the sites they don't want you to see, they'll put them on the bottom of the search engine. Let me show you how this works. You remember years ago, internet first came out, if you would type something in Google or Yahoo, it would come up the first page and then you see like 15 other pages. You could just click to the 15 page. Now when you type it, you gotta go next. You can't skip past the first 10 pages like you used to. You have to go pay. Now by the, most people don't search past the second page. So they fill those first three, four, five pages with all of the articles and websites they want you to see. So when you click on pedophilia, you get 50 websites questioning, it, 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 it ain't too bad, it's okay. You get a lot of those things, and by the time you get down, you think you researched. Because you went through them websites, you think you researched. So these websites have a consensus Meaning they are confirming it and they're sure not condemning it and you think it was right because all the sites that would be against it are on the bottom end of the search engine. So, so everybody in our generation, when they have an issue, problem, or question, what do they do? Let me see what Google gonna say. Are y'all there? This is how they hide everything they don't want you to see. Most of the things that are, uh, most of the things that are bad, they put up front. Other stuff they put in the back because they know our attention span is so short that we ain't gonna search past two times and we done. Then we run out talking about it like we understand stuff. Are y'all there? Now, come on, bro. This is an article. Do you see the title? Do you see the? Do you see the website? Can y'all see that file back from where y'all sitting? I know it's small for y'all, but can you see that? Do you see the WW port? I know it ain't there, but do you see the top? Christian pedophile. Now there's a website if you want to go, don't go, but if you want to go, that's up to you. If your faith ain't strong in Christ, you may get turned out, so. And this is one of the first websites that come up when you type this in. Now the reason why it comes up, look at the question. Why did God? It sounds like, it sounds the same thing as it was the woman you gave me. Indicting God. Now that question within itself already rules out any, any personal responsibility of yours. It rules out choice. Because you're saying God did it. So this is the question. Now I'm so now you, it's, look how hard this agenda is being pushed. Now listen to the article. God says He loves us. Oh, come on, back to me. Oh God, see the love of God is how they push this stuff. Because when Christians would speak out, they would say you ain't loving, and that's judging. And God is love, and we will back off because we ain't had no backbone to go to some more scriptures. Amen. They would hit us with how you going to judge the, the speck in my eye, the beam in your eye. But they don't know the rest of the scripture that when you remove the beam, I can see the judge. Amen. Amen. Now, so this agenda, now, now, now it, says, uh, it says, he says, okay, come on, come on, bro. He says, why did God let me be a pedophile? It upsets me because they are indicting my God. Talk, come back to me. This is the reason why they hijack civil rights and put homosexuality and pe perversion mixed with ours. Because what they did was they equated their choice to our natural state. In other words, they're saying that 
the way we are black is the way they were born gay. The problem is everybody in her, as hard as it is to be black, if we had a choice, we would be white today. You'd be like, I'm forget this white. <laughs> now, if this is true, why is the girl Rachel Dozal? Do they still see her as a white girl trying to be a black woman? So if it's all about choice, then why can't I just choose I'm white today? <laughs> because it seemed like if, 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 no, 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 no. Why can't I just say I was born, I was born white? <laughs> Who are you to tell me I'm not white? God don't make mistakes. But why would I be looked at as insane? Because people would look at the fruit or the characteristics of me being black, and they would say, no matter what you say, this mirror is saying you are a black man. So if we can get that concept, why can't you put the mirror against his genitalia? and say, look in the mirror, you was born with this, no way. So he's indicting God. Come on, bro. Why did God let me be a pedophile? God said, and this is what he's doing. Oh, I, I hate when they try to quote, they try to put the word back on us. Don't know the Bible, just know the part that, that make them not feel convicted. God says that he is love. If that's true, why did he give us attractions? Come on back. Lord, I ain't going to get through this. Come on back. I'll, I'll be all day with this. See, it's, this is being written in a way to make a person struggling question. It'll make them begin to accept that God, that first of all, God, God gave me these attractions. The Bible says when a man is tempted, he is enticed. He is drawn away by his own lust. And lust, listen, cannot hurt you unless it is conceived. Meaning you have to choose to act on the temptation. If you act on the temptation, you're going to be a fag. Because you acted on the lust to be homosexual. But if you never acted on the temptation, or if you never acted on your own lust, which is not love, Lust is selfish desire. Then you only gave because you acted on your own lust and you didn't call that lust. So if we were to be honest, let me show you how this works. I got to go, Lord. Lord, I ain't got time to get. If we were to be honest, we have all, if you lived in this frame called the flesh, flesh is very tricky. It asks for a lot of things. You gotta be, that's why Paul said, I don't trust the flesh Amen. at all. Many of you all today have had strange temptations. Might have not been that. Strange, did you know a strange temptation? You know suicide is a strange temptation? It's not natural to want to kill yourself. But what, why are you still here? You didn't conceive it. If you would have conceived it, we'd be over your grave. But if you conceive it, that is where it ceases from being temptation and becoming sin, meaning transgression, based upon the fact that I conceived the signal of the enemy. If you were to conceive, if you were to conceive every temptation that came to your mind, you would be gay. Oh, you would be, I know people acting on it. You would be, you would be flaming, parade, <laughs> dancing, gay. Because it is a spirit that has targeted us all. There were people around you with that were gay. And that spirit was transferring. And for a brief minute, some of y'all for longer, you 
the contemplation, y'all don't want to be honest. See, you can't. The, the thought ran through the mind. And if you didn't do what the Bible said, cast him down. Every thought that exalts itself against what I know is right, the knowledge of God. So you had to catch the devil. That ain't true. That ain't me. Now that right there saved you from a life of sin. So if you so if you give in to that thought, the attraction becomes greater. The more you do it, the more you get an appetite for it. That's why if you don't like, if you don't like greens, which you crazy, especially with smoked turkey, you ignorant, you ignorant. Nobody taught you. But if you don't like that, like macaroni cheese, if you don't like macaroni cheese, something really wrong. I'm talking about real. I'm talking about. The big mama with the fat right here. You don't like that, you don't know nothing about nothing. But if you eat it, I can't even use that. The better way, I, the better thing, I, the better illustration is smoking. Smoking. If you ever smoke cigarette, you know that when you first tried to smoke, your whole being, body, everything told you, this is, you killing me. This is not right. You try to inhale, you start coughing, you get dizzy, you get sick. Why? Your body says, don't, this, don't put this in me. But if you override it, you'll learn to inhale. By the time you learned it, you hooked. Your body has a craving for it. But you built the appetite based upon yielding to the temptation. Oh, God. So God didn't make you that way. You was drawn away by what was already there. That's why the Bible says, Jesus said, what goes into a man does not defile the man, but what is already in the man. That means you was, we all were born with our own lust based upon the sins of our parents, but you was born with a tendency towards a certain sin. Your job is to get Christ, use the power of the Holy Ghost to buffet this body so that, it's, so that you conquer the lust that traps your mama, the lust that traps your father. The lust that got your brother, the lust that got your sister, through Christ you overcome it. But he don't take it away. You got to overcome. That's why we are overcomers, not runners. Say amen. So what are you doing in this life? You're learning to overcome. That's where you get your war rewards and crowns from. Overcoming the tendency that you already had. So therefore... He's indicting God, saying God gave me this attraction, when really what, if God gave you anything, it was something to overcome, to make you a warrior, to get you some rewards and crowns. Oh, y'all not there. Are y'all there? Come on, bro. Oh, Lord, I, I ain't going to get done. I got too far to go. What, what purpose does it serve? No, if it's true, why did, he give me, give, why did he give us attractions we can never act on? What purpose does it serve to go on fighting these feelings? Come on. <laughs> I'm not, I got too far to go and stop on everything. But this makes me mad because I see the demonic writing here. This is Satan writing this. I imagine, I imagine a child or somebody struggling. I imagine like a Christian or somebody who's saved and they battling homosexuality and they want to live for God but they run across this because Satan always forms his assault as a question. Amen. That's why I know Satan wrote this. Amen. Because when, 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 when the enemy, the serpent came unto the woman, he said, did God say? He formed his attack. Listen, the reason why he forms his attack as a question, because the human mind is designed to answer questions. Your mind is a computer that if you put something in there, it'll start do -do 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 -do, trying to figure out the information. So that's why he forms his temptation, listen, as a question. So when he came to the woman, he started questioning. Make, now, when he forms a question, it makes you question. Now, once you start questioning God, he got you. So the person reading this is starting to question. It's true. Why did he give me these desires? If I can't, it don't seem logical to give me something and not act on it. 
Don't he want me to enjoy all things? See, you can boil the mind and work it out. This is why these guys think they save and they gay. They think they say they not. Let me, let, let me go further. Ain't no gay Christians. Now let, me, now let me figure. There are Christians that battle homosexuality, meaning they fighting against it. They might have fell in it, but they fighting. That's different. That's a war. That's a soldier fighting. They haven't overcome, but they are the intent. God gives us F A's for intent. But ain't nobody legally, lawfully taking place, part in that, and saved. Because it's an oxymoron. Come on, bro, Lord. Tell your gay cousins what I said. It seems so awful. I don't believe God made us this way. I don't think he wanted anyone to have pedophilia. Now, he done went to a whole nother level. And it, was, and it wasn't his doing. All of us suffer from many things God that God never intended. Come on back to me. Pedophilia is just one example of things that we go through. Oh, the deception of the enemy. This is how he forms his logic, and people think this way. Come on, bro, let me get done. And it's not just us. Come on back, Lord. Now, now see, I can't let it just be me. I got to put it on you, too. This is the reason why there's a broad road that leads to hell. Because nobody going there wants to go alone. That's why the Bible says they take pleasure in those that do this wrong stuff. Come on, bro. Think of the evil in the world. Come on back. Now I got to indict the world. See, see, I got to make my sin like everybody else's sin. But there's a difference in homosexual pedophile sin than fornication. All of it, yes, is sin. But there's certain powers and spirits attached to certain acts. So yes, God going to judge it all as sin. But there's certain powers that are more strong when you get into this because of the destruction of the other life that you are guilty of perverting. Now, a, a grown man and a grown man, notice they always use fornication, but a grown man and a grown woman fornicating is not the same as two consenting adults, meaning they know what they're doing against their body, but a grown man and a child is different. Because the child is being raped. And the spirit of violence is different from the spirit of fornication. But because of this one sin, always sin, every you get the one sin, no, that don't mean that. That means, yes, God's going to judge all sin. But in this life, there are certain powers, spirits that are drawn to certain sin. If it wasn't true, then why ain't the end time sin why ain't the Antichrist that we saw in Daniel, I believe, chapter 11, why is he, why the Bible say he won't have a desire woman? Why won't the, why wasn't it, why, why, why wasn't his sin, uh, why wasn't his, his real sin, he's a liar? Why not the end time sin just be lying? This is lying. Why is the end time sin perversion? Because it's more power in this. Y'all there. I think it was the first trick of the enemy to make us put all sin on the same category. The penalty for all sin is the same. Ways of sin, death. But the consequences in this life is different. If you think it's not true, there's a difference in fornication and adultery. Two people fornicating is different than a, than a married person uh, having uh, committed adultery. If you don't believe me, ask the guys that got all their stuff, stuff taken. It was a penalty. <laughs> oh, Lord, let me go. Lord, let me go. I got to go. Is this too much? Come on, I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to make you a word. Stop agreeing with this garbage and this empire stuff y'all watching and these housewife whores and all that. This is what's messing y'all up because this is programming for the, for the intent of the king. 
It's all going the same way. Amen. It's going to end up with sex with children. Yes. Yes. Sex with children is the height of Baal worship. Oh, I ain't got it. Baal, Baal is Molech. Molech was the god of child sacrifice that Israel kept getting entangled with. And they would use their children to fulfill sexual pleasure to fulfill satanic ritual. So children are the focus because children are the innocent. That's why God said, I hate those that shed innocent blood. So the focus was always the children. The little battles was the man and man, the woman. That's the little battles, but the real focus of the war was for the children. That's why we got abortion clinics. It was always about the children. Abortion is sacrificing your child to the God called Molech. Amen. The act of fornication was the result, the baby was the result of the act. Mm -hmm. But you went into ritual when you sacrificed the child. Yes. Right. Now you are, you are, a, 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 you are a, 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 a blind worshiper of Molech. Mm -hmm. If you've never repented for doing that, mm -hmm. Amen. you have a file in hell. Yes. Are y'all done? Yeah. That's why you need the blood of Jesus. To cleanse me from the blood I shed. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing. On Christ the solid rock, I stand all other ground. That's why if you've done it, this blood of Jesus, I repent, cleanse me from the innocent blood I shed. Remove the curse that came in my life. That's where your miscarriage and stuff be coming from. Y'all won't talk about that either. If you curse your womb, a lot of things are going to be hard for things to grow. Too much? But that was just one battle. But the, the war was still with the children. All right, come on, bro, let me get done. Messed you up a little bit. And it's not just us. Think of an evil, think of the evil in the world. People who, people do horrible things to each other, and the devil looks for every opportunity to contribute to our natural disasters. What's this got to do? See, this is the, the smoke screen stuff. What's natural disaster got to do with you having desire? Come on. And people have bodies with disabilities and disorders like pedophilia. Oh, look at the slick. That was slick. Y'all didn't see it. That was slick. He took a perversion and named it as a slid it in as a disorder. The devil wrote this. Come on, bro. How did this happen and why does God allow it? What? Allow us disasters? Allow people with disabilities? No, those are things that God may have allowed, but he didn't allow you. But they, do y'all see how they, look at how, you got to be a wise person to look at that and understand what that would do to the mind of an unsuspecting child. I told you, the devil, the Bible said he's, he's, a, he's a father of lies. Come on, let me go, come on, bro. Greece declares pedophilia a disability, deserving state benefits. Do y'all know where our world, they the ones where we get this stuff at anyway. But do you know where our world is headed? Come on, bro. A, a disability is an inability to, to, to take care of yourself, to walk right. And move. How is the desire to have sex with a child disable you? Do y'all see that? Come on, bro. Do y'all see six years ago? I know it's small, but this was six years ago. This was six years ago. Imagine where we are today. Can you think back six years? The Greek government is being denounced by the National, National Confederation of Disabled People. Come on back. <laughs> Disabled Catholic. Man, don't be putting that stuff on us, man. Me being crippled ain't got nothing to do. That's the way we should denounce. Black folks should have denounced this gay stuff by saying, we, 
Our color ain't got nothing to do with you wanting to have sex with a man. Don't be putting that on us. This ain't the same fight. That's y'all stuff. Come on, bro. After it added pedophiles, exhibitionists, oh, <laughs> kleptomaniacs to the list of disabled people entitled to state benefits. Come on back, bro. Do y'all see where the world is going? These European nations is what America's adopting. A person that steals, his benefit is stealing. Why he need a benefit? A kleptomaniac has an impulse to steal. Giving him benefits ain't gonna stop him from wanting to steal. So why not just let his benefit be stealing? Do you see? But y'all don't know this is a small battle but the attempt is to normalize all dysfunction and indecency so that you can't say nothing when the greatest injustice to humanity takes place when you see a grown man take a little child and rape them. Once you have took away all boundaries of right and wrong, then you will never be able to call that wrong. That's why they're doing this. Right. Right. And, and, and college, is where you getting indoctrinated with this. Amen. Come on, let me help you. Come on, bro, let me get done. They have joined pyromaniacs, people that set fires. <laughs> <laughs> and post compulsive gamblers, fetishists, sadomasochists. You know, that's that movie, of Fifty Shades, that y'all been watching. And persons entitled to ask for government assistance. Come on, bro. This, I'm telling y'all, this is where we're headed. This is what, now, now let, me, now, now, let me help y'all. Let, let me give you some prophetic so you can say you heard it here first. Do you know what Donald Trump is doing? Let me tell you what he's really doing. I'm gonna tell y'all what they're using Donald Trump to do. They knew there are certain things that America, black people would, and, and the Christian, Christian right black people would never go for. They knew this, These, the elite is the elite Jews, the ones that run the Hollywood and all that. They the ones that run your government and everything. I know you don't know it, but that's who's doing it. Did you know that the reason, the reason that they used in Donald Trump was the reason they used Obama? The reason that they used Donald Trump is because they knew certain things that they need to, to happen in this nation because they know the time clock of their antichrist. They know he's coming. They have to get it done fast, and they don't have 10 more years to get it done. They had to get the world in a state of utter hatred. Yeah. Hatred for anything called right. Alt right, Christian right, third right, anything called right. So that by the time these four years is up, the world's going to be screaming for the most liberal person ever. And that person is going to be the one that bring about the true atmosphere of the Antichrist. See, some things won't work. They knew we would never, Obama had a lot of resistance. They knew he, he did what he was there to do. He pushed the board from way further than where it should have been. But they knew the resistance, the backlash was coming. That's why the white folks voted, even though they knew Trump was crazy, they voted for him because they saw how far the liberals had pushed that agenda. And Trump getting elected was a pushback. But the Jewish media is going to, by the time this thing is over, you're going to be screaming for whoever. It could be an alien. You don't go care who it is. You don't care if the guy eat people. You're going to want anybody but this dude. And you're going to welcome the set up person that's going to actually usher in the total destruction. It's, it's just a setup. If you really think you picked the president, you are crazy. Y'all should have known you don't pick presidents when, 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 when Al Gore beat Bush and they gave it to Bush. They, Florida girl gave it to Bush. Y'all should have knew that. Because Bush was a pedophile. A lot of these people pedophile. How did we, <laughs> listen, you know George Bush mama, Barbara Bush, father is Alistair Crowley. The guy that called himself the B666. This is the guy with Alpha Kinsey that raped kids. 
That was her, that was her daddy. Why did that ever come out? Because these people are all, these are the people in power, and you thinking you vote for Cassie. Y'all ready to go? Now, what was I saying? Give me one point before that. I was making a point. Y'all don't know. I messed y'all up now. <laughs> Let's go with it. Come on, bro. Demonic psychology. This is demonic psychology. I misspelled the word author, but I'm going to give you demonic psychology. This is an author called Philip Greaves. Everyone has sex with children because everyone is someone's child forever. Come on back. Demonic philosophy. So, so listen, <laughs> what this means is I'm 44, and because me and my wife are married and we are joined in consummation, I'm technically having sex with a child because she's somebody's child. Demonic philosophy. This is why your college, your college uh, professors, a lot of these lesbians, they're trying to push on our women that the real height of womanhood is actually having sex with another woman. This is what they're teaching in college. This is where Black Lives Matter came from. They are not feminist no more. They are womanist. And women this experience women in every way. Leave it up to your own imagination. They said the high, they said a woman could never come into her full self until she is sexually involved with another woman. This is what they teach. Right in line with pedophile ideology. Talk to me. Let's keep can we keep going too much? Come on. Remember I talked to you about the gay manifesto. I'm just going to take a point. This is what they said back in what, I think 85? That they were going to do. Gay cats. That they said we just want to put flowers in our hair and do her, and we just want to skip around and just have just love between each other. Gay, gay was never, come on bro. Gay was never about love between men. It was always about pedo. Ped, it, our culture comes from the Greek culture. The Greek culture Marriage was not about man and woman love, and it was about procreation only. Their true love was with boys. The old man would become a mentor to a little boy. Where we get the word tor, mentor. That's how the child felt being mentored. Because they would have sex with this little boy, and as long as the, uh, the, 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 the as long as the older male was on top, meaning he was giving it. He wasn't, didn't consider himself wrong or even gay. They didn't even have a word called gay. So this little boy was like his pet that he would just, for, that's who he really wanted to be involved with. And his wife was for social and you know heritage, keeping the bloodline just to procreate. This is why so many, if you notice, why so many queens were so savage and they hated these kings and stuff because this guy always wanted a child. He was wanted a boy more than he wanted a woman. So when I taught y'all about the gay manifesto back in 85, uh, no, no, I didn't teach y'all in 85. I don't know where I was in 85. But I taught y'all, they wrote this in 85 and everything he wrote has come to pass just like one of them, but what I want to show y'all, one part, come on, bro. I know y'all can't see it, it's cut off a little bit, but it says, we shall sodomize your sons, emblems of your feeble masculinity, of your shallow dreams and vulgar lies. What lies? Lies that you were not born that way. We shall seduce them. Now, come on back. This don't sound like love. This sound like an angry, violent person that's so angry at straight folk. Because somebody messed him up. That he's angry. He never gets the person back that did it. So he punishes boys. Because European sex, which is what white, which is what gay sex is, it didn't come from Africa. 
That type of sex is based upon aggression. It's not based upon love. It's based upon aggression. So it's an aggressive, like, this is the reason why you see cats like Jeffrey Dahmer, them type of people. It goes from sex into cannibalism and uh, violence and rape because it was never based upon uh, love, what we, what we had gotten from Africa. Africa was the cradle of what civilization was. That's the reason why there was normal relationship. But European sex was twisted in a way when they got in certain power, they began to carry out certain sexual behaviors that wasn't known to us. That's what slavery was. Slavery was about sex forms. I know y'all don't want to deal with that, but it was about sex forms where they actually just, it was, it was more sex than it was picking cotton. Picking cotton is the covering of the real goal was to have sexual forms where they had sex with men and boys and girls. It was like it was like going into a uh, it was like going into a um, a a a, a, um, a brothel, and they had the little boys dressed up like little girls with makeup with little stuff on, run around naked, and they would the men would choose them, and they had and then once they would break them little boys, they would, you know little boys would break them so much over and over, the boy would become so violent because. He, this is what happened to him. They would they put him caged up, put, lock him up like an animal. And then what they would do, they would, they, would, they would use him to be the buck. And they would go get some little 12, 13 year old girl and give her to this guy. And this guy would, dis but, he, but he, was, he, would, he would plant the seed. This is what they were doing. It was not, see these movies about roots and all, this stuff was whitewashing what really happened. Slavery was more about sex than anything else. Christopher Columbus, I taught y'all about this dude. This guy didn't found nothing. This guy was a psychopathic Jewish homosexual pedophile. And what he did was he came to these Americas and extinct these beautiful brown Aztec looking people. And, and even he did it in Haiti too. See the people of Haiti, black people wasn't there. It was the Tatino Indians that was in Haiti. Christopher Columbus and them raped them so bad, and they, what they, they, the people literally just died out. And they took them, and, and, and Christopher Columbus in his journal would say, there's nothing more beautiful than the, than the male, the young man of, of these Indians. We love them. He lusted them. He would pay his soldiers by giving them children. He would pay them by, here's a boy, or if you want a girl, here's a little girl. And the Tatino Indians were so ravaged that the women stopped wanting to have kids. They started killing their own babies. They wanted to die out because of what was going on with them. This was a people who wasn't violent, but they even welcomed, you know how the Indians were, welcomed these cats? And they taught them how to live on the land, and they just started killing them. So sex is not, it was not the same. See, the Greek culture is where we get our culture. And the Greek culture was about pedestry, which was about men having sex with boys. The women were always upset. Why do y'all think white women came up with women's liberation? They came up with women's liberation because they understood there's something just quite, not quite right with this dude. And we need to be on our own because she was more, she was less valuable actually than black people. Because black people got rights before she did. So she understood something was wrong. And she wanted to be independent from this guy. When we were okay with being dependent, come on. Oh, y'all don't want to talk no more. So we shall sodomize your son. Just look it up. You know you can Google this stuff. Do y'all not know that there's more on Google than sex and pornography? You do know you can find this. It's, it's not like I'm, if you right now, while you listening, type gay manifesto. You'll see what I'm saying. It ain't like I made that up. Type pedestry in the Greek culture. and You'll see what we got Socrates. These philosophers, play, they was all homosexuals. Plato, homosexuals. Amen. Not homosexuals, pedophiles. Amen. Amen. This is where we got our culture. This is who y'all quote now. This is Shakespeare and them cats. These are them people that y'all went to school and was forced to learn. You ever ask, why, did you, why was you forced to learn about that culture? Because the people who funded public education, the Rockefellers and, 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 and the Rothschilds, these elite families, they were pedophiles. So they knew if they teach you that culture, eventually you'll come to the conclusion of that culture, which was pedophilia. That's what the culture was. Are y'all there? Can we go? 
we'll sodomize your sons, emblems of your masculine people, I'm saying, we shall seduce them in your schools, in your dormitories, in your gymnasiums, your locker rooms, in your sports arenas, in your seminaries, in your youth groups, in your movie theater, bathrooms, bathrooms. Maybe that's why they want to get in the bathroom. In your army bunk houses, in your truck stops, in all your male clubs. This is why they pushed in every male club. This is why they, they're in the Boy Scouts, they're everywhere. In your house of Congress, wherever men are with men together, your sons shall become our minions and do our bidding. They, they will be recast in our image. They will become, they will come to crave and adore us. Come on, bro. Let me get done. Let me get done. Come on, bro. Sodom and rising. Sodom rising. The Pedophile Protection Act. I know y'all can't see it, but I'll read it. I just want to, I, I put titles just so you can look it up and you can see it for yourself. The Pedophile Protection Act furthers 50 years of government-sponsored subversion against America's children. Jesus warned his disciples that it would be better for a man if a millstone were hanged about his neck and cast into the sea than that he should offend one of these little ones. Luke 17, 2 says, Jesus also said that as it was in the days of Lot, who lived in Sodom, even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. Come on back. So as it was in the days of Lot, this is when we're going to see the Son of Man. You can't tell me. We almost there. We got to be real close. Y'all there? It says uh, Gen in Luke 28, 30, in Genesis, uh, we read that the men of Sodom and old and young men were sexually depraved. Despite these clear biblical warnings, the harm done to America's children has been all but abandoned by the modern church. Pastors and teachers of every stripe have chosen to look the other way. Come on back to me. That was what the faith-based initiative money was for. Y'all don't know what that was. You remember under Bush, they gave mega churches all that money? What y'all think they gave it to them for? They gave it to them because they wanted to push the homosexual agenda, and that's when all of a sudden pastors stopped teaching against it, and it became okay. That's when this Eddie Long stuff came out. They paid the preachers to turn, same way Margaret Sanger paid the preachers to look away from abortion. They paid the preachers to look away from this agenda, which was homosexuality. Despite these clear biblical, okay, uh, let's see. Pastors and teachers of every stripe have chosen to look the other way at the rising tide of child sexual abuse that runs rampant in our society. A new Christian documentary called The Kinsey Syndrome, am I taught on Alpha Kendry? Kenzie, this guy's the one that raped all them kids where we get our sexual under education and understanding from. It's got raped children, and that's where we get our understanding. He raped babies. He said that if a baby cries during sex, that's a, what, what, that's a baby having an orgasm. This guy, see, that's some guys that need to be dead. Amen. That's some guys that just need to be dead. Some people are beyond redemption. But he got, he got his in the end because he self-mutilated himself and died a terrible, painful death. There are some people, you know, I'm saved, I'm a Christian, you know, I love, I, I believe everybody can be redeemed, but some people just on the level of evil that you just be like, Lord, just take them. Take them. Take them out. This guy molested hundreds of children, and our sexual understanding came from him. He wrote these sexual philo uh, uh, philosophy and uh, psych psychiatric books, which is why we think the way we think about sex today. Uh, a new Christian documentary called The Kinsey Syndrome tackles this tough issue exposing the wicked influence of Dr. Alpha Kinsey and his sex reports, which were designed to ultimately normalize child molestation in America. The film, which has been called a masterpiece by the New American Magazine, is written and directed by award-winning uh, filmmaker Christian J. Pinto, who says he made the film to wake up pastors, teachers, and churches that have neglected the issue and often refuse to even talk about it. He says his research reveals that many church leaders have been caught in sex scandals, often involving children. He says the leading inspiration for this behavior is usually an addiction to pornography, which is discussed at length in the film. Judgment begins at the house of the Lord, says Pinto. We have a responsibility to speak out and help these suffering children. Most of us can look the other way or turn off the TV if we don't want to hear about such things. But these kids don't have any choice. They are forced to endure horrible abuse, often for years at a time. Come on back to me, bro. Come on, I'm rushing to get done. Come on back. Lord, look at what time it is. 
Come on, come on. The Kinsey, the Kinsey Syndrome uh, chiefly represents research of Dr. Judith Reisman, a former department, y'all remember I taught y'all about her, a, 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 a department of justice researcher who was considered the leading authority in the world on the damaging influence of Alfred Kinsey and the porn industry. See, you brothers think that this is, this is just, uh, uh, come on, this is just sex or just uh, lusting pictures of uh, videos, but there is a definite demonic, unnatural mentality that comes upon people who watch pornography. Amen. People that watch pornography have a low, have a low understanding of the pain of others. Because in his mind, it's all a fantasy. He has no idea that this girl that just went through all of this stuff leaves up out of there broken, bow-legged, feces all over on the floor, vomit everywhere, because this is what has to take place for this 60, 90 minutes of your pleasure. Are y'all there? Amen. They make it look wonderful and exciting. These are the most beautiful people, but these people, usually a lot of these girls was got into it through pimping or got into it through stripping or some way where she got in the sex industry thinking about the money and didn't realize the bondage that you get in. Notice it ain't even about the, it really they don't even make it about the men, it's about the women. Are you hearing what I'm saying? But it all starts with pornography. I taught y'all before, remember when I said we were playboys? That, that when I taught that about the goal of um, Playboy dude, Hugh, Hugh Hefner, his whole goal, he was a CIA psychologist, he was a smart man. The goal of Playboy was to normalize uh, male uh, sex by yourself, meaning having sex by looking at pictures so there would be more homo to destroy the home. And he knew that if men would be get off into this, men would get married later, because they would be doing, they would be getting sexually fulfilled through pornography that they won't need no woman right now. So that, and then the longer that a man delays in getting married, the more perversion he'll get into. Then he'll end up a homosexual or a pedophile. Yep. This was planned for years. Are you there? That's why you young brothers, I tell y'all, you know, you may think that it's just harmless, but it is affecting your brain. It affects your mind. It'll make you look at women different. It'll make you look at children different. Sex would not be an act of love between a man and a woman, but it would be an act of aggression Amen. about getting off, not by loving and, and, and wanting to nurture, but it would only be about one thing. Say amen. amen. And that's the reason why you have to be taught or retaught properly. Amen. Are y'all there? Amen. Now, come on, bro. Her research reveals beyond any doubt that the new Pedophile Protection Act, Pedophile Protection Act, is simply the latest in the long chain of law bending compromises that date back to the corrupt pseudoscience of Dr. Alfred Kinsey. Kinsey's research has been used to further homosexuality, pedophilia, and the new culture of apparent sexual behavior. Kinsey's aim was to destroy our Judeo Christian values, says Reisman. The one who suffers the most, he, she says, are always the children. In Ezekiel, God commanded certain men to set a mark on the foreheads of the men that sigh and that cry for all the abominations that are done in the midst of the city. Mark them. Then they taken away the mark of pedophilia, so you don't, they don't, it ain't shameful no more. Then God commanded, saying, slay, kill them, utterly old and young, but come not near any man upon whom is the mark, and begin at my sanctuary. Begin at my sanctuary. If the Lord were to give such a commandment today, which which category would American Christian pastors, teachers, and leaders find themselves in? Amen. Look at this. Music industry, the gate to hell. Justin Bieber speaks out about pedophilia and abuse in Hollywood. It says, recently Justin Bieber was all over the news for abruptly canceling the rest of his purpose world tour. Look at me. Me and my wife, this is what makes me so mad. Me and my wife was in Nashville. We was in the church in Nashville. Uh, we was cool with a the pastor there, and we met Justin Bieber's mother. And uh, this is right before he blew up. And he was, in, he was in Hollywood, he was making music, he was, he was big at the time. But he was still, you know, he, was, he had blew up, but he wasn't like he is now. And his mother, we met her, and there was, we was at the church, there was a pastor there, and this pastor told his mother uh, to come up and they were gonna pray. Ricky Skaggs, I don't know if y'all know him, country singer, he was there too. And, uh, and they brought Ricky Skaggs up, and they brought his mother up, and they were like, we're gonna pray for Justin Bieber. And they were like, we're gonna pray for him to 
bring light to the industry. And I, me and my wife sitting there like this. Yes. And that's what showed me how these pastors, it was a wicked thing he did. Because instead of him telling his mother, get that boy out of there. For the little money, prestige, fame he thought he was going to get, he went ahead. And me and my wife were sitting there like, dude, y'all praying for something. And that's when, that's when I told him, I said, I'm done with these people. I'm done with these people. I said, I ain't, I'm done. I said, because these people, they, they mask like they want Christianity, but they just want fame in Hollywood. And they, and, and they prayed. And when, when he said that, Ricky Skaggs, you know, he's a big country singer, he looked at the pastor like, because he knew what the industry was. They're going to take this little boy and turn him out. Now, remember this, how many years ago was that, baby? About 2011, somewhere around there. Now, 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 come on. Hold on, hold on, hold on, bro, hold on. Hold on, bro. Come on back. It says, now, while his fans and media were angry at him, he never stated the reason for his decision publicly, and now it seems like we finally know the reason. In the last few months, Justin Bieber became a more active Christian and a regular member of a Bible study in Beverly Hills. Last week, he shared a horrific story with the other Bible study members explaining why he left, why he left uh, that he had to, why he left, why he felt that he had to quit his tour and take a break from the music industry. He was attending a party with many other producers, power agents, and different important figures in the music industry. Okay, and he says, I didn't want to do this. I really didn't. They said this kid was drugged. It was horrible, Beaver said, explaining that it was made clear to him that he would gain entry to the business side of the industry if he joined the club by passing the initiation rights, I wouldn't just be a performer, I would be a mogul. That path would open up for me like it did for Jay-Z. It's the difference between being a millionaire and being a billionaire. As shocking as these details are, they really show the dark side of the music industry. Justin was encouraged to take his career to the next level and join the club just like Jay-Z and many others. Although he had heard rumors about these kinds of rituals in the industry, Justin stated that he hadn't been confronted with it before on a personal level. To join the club, I had to do bad things to this poor kid. Then I realized that even that wasn't enough for them. I also have to kill this little child. They said this kid was raped by a few different guys. They said he was bleeding. I got out of there, but, it, but I heard he died, and that haunts me. Come on back. This is the industry. This is the entertainment world we're living in. That we we looking up to these guys. P. Diddy and, and Jay-Z and all these cats. And we have no idea that these guys got to go commit these rituals to be where they are. Why y'all think Katy Perry going crazy? Why y'all think they going crazy? Because they, they done been in there and seen the real, the real side of fame. And the ones that are okay with it are, are, are been your biggest stars for years and years and years because they go do these rituals all the time. But, but what is it about? Pedophilia. Pedophilia. Now what I want to give you real quick, I want to give you something about the church. Amen? And uh, some of this is a little messed up, but I, I'm going to read through it. Uh, but I want to show you how this happened to nullify or, numb, or dumb down or numb the church. Amen? Come on, can I do it quick? Amen. Now go to Isaiah 3, 12. Isaiah 3, 12, real quick. You ain't got to go there. I know we, we, want, we on the time constraint. I'll give it to you. Come on, bro. As for my people, children are their oppressors. Women rule over them. Oh, my people, they which cause thee to err and destroy the ways of, they which lead thee, cause thee to err and destroy the ways of our path. Now, if I start from the bottom, I'm going to show you how the church became complicit. And notice why no preachers are speaking out against what I'm saying today. You can't really name very many. Most of them are on YouTube or the internet, some small churches, because mega church leaders ain't touching this. If you start from the bottom, they normalize, don't look at the accept verbs, that was just something I was writing, thinking about. No, they normalize fornication. Come on back, bro. They normalize fornication. That happened first. Now remember, it used to be where you wouldn't go to church if you were shacking up and you was in a, you wouldn't go. Because there was marriages in church, there was families in church, but they normalized fornication. That was the first step to make us agree with pedophilia. Now y'all don't know, I'm trying to show y'all the way, the way we went. Come on, bro. Accept unwed births. Come on, bro. That means that we started to accept having babies out of wedlock. Say amen. 
to accept there being no male in the house. Come on, accept there's no male in the home. We start catering to that because when there's no male in the home, the children are uncovered, meaning they're not protected. There's no man to stop. Most of, most of this molestation happens in the home. Say amen. It usually happens by stepfather, boyfriend, uncle, cousin. Say amen. By older male that has access to children because pedophiles love to be around access to children. That's why they are your teachers. That's why they're always in places where children are. Say amen. Because there's no male in the home that can look at this brother and say, he's just, no, this brother's all. He knew he could get in that home because you normalize the female leading the home without the male. And he knew that he could get in there through giving the mother a few dollars or being cool with her. And she would let her guard down and let him have access to the children, or especially the boys. Come on. We changed the leadership in the church from male to female. Come on back. Amen. That happened early in the 90s, late 80s, early 90s. And in 2000, they started changing the leadership where it, 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 it no longer became a, a, a problem to have a, a males or females in, in, in certain areas of leadership knowing that males are the ones that set order. Say amen. amen. And because we didn't care about that, we didn't care about, so then we began to change from, from masculine, say amen, patriarchal leadership style, the way the most high is, patriarch, to female style leadership. That's why we still having our, our women's ministries and our women's conferences everywhere, catering to women now. You can't even find a ministry that ain't got something to do about empowering, empowering black women, empowering women. Say amen. amen. They ain't empower no family. They ain't empower no marriage. They ain't empower no children. It's only empowering the women, which ain't nothing but a spinoff of the feminist movement, which was the design that feminism would take over the church. That's a small battle to get to the children. Pedo. Come on, talk to me. That's the big battle. While y'all laying out on the floor prophesying, the goal is where the kids at? They down there being watched by somebody suspect. Because ain't no man there, baby daddy, boyfriends, is there molest look at the stories we get now. Baby daddy, boyfriend, molesting. I'm not saying that's the men are dead wrong, but somebody leaving them. But when you normalize, when you normalize sin, then you have to compensate. And you normalize fornication, you normalize having kids out of, out of wedlock, you normalize changing the, the, changing the leadership from the protector style, which is male, yes. to the nurture style, which is female. Meaning males will protect or stop stuff. Females will nurture and agree. Amen. Amen. That's how homosexuals got off because they got through the females knowing the females would nurture them and accept it in. But the father would always disagree. That's why every movie is against the father. You can't even find a movie that's not against the father. We just watched a movie about the Garden of the Galaxy. This is the second, it came out, this is the second movie, Garden of the Galaxy. The whole movie was about him being against his father. Every movie was to turn kids against the masculine Amen. so that they would not look at, because the father's the one that says no. The father's the one that set order and boundaries. So they turn you against the father and make like he's just mean because he said no. And you run to the feminine energy, which is the mother, and she nurtures you and becomes okay and fights for you against the father. And that's why we got gay boys. I said it. I said it. Come on. Acceptance of homosexuality was a second for the last thing that happened in the church. Come on back. You don't believe we accepted it, but we did. We always accepted it right here. Right here. It's always four or five gay boys right here. We accepted Tony, who came out openly gay. Yeah, he's still in the church singing. We, we accepted it. We've been accepted. Ain't no church you ain't been to that it ain't been right there. You, you know the one. These old loose booty boys up there. And the men are like, man, what is it? Where is it? That's why brothers don't like church, but it's a church full of black women. Y'all know it, full of women, because you okay with this old gay, the sissy, sh sashay and cats. Now the pastor gay. Bitch Betty Long wasn't having sex with little girls. She was having sex with boys. That shows you that the church fell to that. Why? Because we changed leadership from, from masculine to feminine, and the feminine does not protect. Amen. Females don't protect. That's why everything can come into our community, because they don't protect the community. Amen. Females think about themselves, but the male stops, he protects stuff. Amen. But there is no males there. I'm not letting the man off the hook because he's passed us out of reason that it's like that, because they didn't shut that down. These Negroes are so scared of their wives, this Jezebel spirit, this guy's so soft and Ahab that he wouldn't shut that down to protect the flock. I said it. 
Right now today, you got these pastors that's giving in, giving in to everything. That's why we the where we are. Say amen. amen. We got to stand. These pastors got to stand up and preach it because our children are at stake. Yes. The fire of Sodom is coming. It's coming. And they don't want to be judged alone. And that's why they're after your son and your daughter, and they're fighting you. They're getting you fired on your job when they know you're against it. You can't put out no, you can't put out no text. Can't put out no Facebook post. Anything you say, they 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 watching your Facebook post to see what you say so they can get you fired, because they don't want no resistance to the to to, to what they want to get into, and we as a people have to declare this is wrong. This is wrong. The Most High said it's wrong. <laughs> Even to them ones in your family, it's wrong. If I catch little Bobby where he shouldn't be, look, he gonna get. I don't care nothing about that. See, because cause now, y'all know, y'all know, y'all know right now today who protects these brothers. Y'all know who protects them. Anytime the boys want to whoop little Bobby, leave Bobby alone. <laughs> leave him alone. He just different. Y'all ain't got to mess with him. And we we leave him alone. But what Bobby needed was to get whooped, <laughs> get whooped a few times, fight hard, get whooped, fight hard, get whooped. A lot of my, a lot of brothers I grew up with, there was a few, one a lot, but there was a few that we knew was sissies. He was soft. Man, we beat that brother up so, so many times, he learned to fight. That brother played football better than we do now. Because we, because he didn't have no father to tell him that was wrong. So at least the boys in the community, just knowing we didn't have fathers either, but we knew one thing, that ain't right. He's holding his hand wrong. That's wrong. And we would, we would be hard on him. We would be hard on him. Amen. And eventually, man, he would, he would, eventually, he would square up with somebody and fight back. And once he fought back, it's like that man, that man, he felt good about being a man. But we have to understand that, it's, that the goal is to get the children. Come on, say, we got to save our children. Come on, stand on your feet. Y'all grandparents need to know this. Y'all got little babies. And, 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 and y'all daughters and sons are stupid. And they leave these kids with everybody. And you as a grandparent got to know. You got you to look and discern as a grandparent. You got to look at that. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. This child ain't acting right. This child ain't acting right. Beware when these childs get real clingy to you as a grandparent. They just start getting clingy. It's because something's happening at home. And you as a grandparent got to, especially you that are saved, you got to know how to begin to pray, ask the right questions. Because it only takes a second for that child to get ruined. Say amen. amen. Come on, son. We're going to pray. I know it's late. We're not going to give off the call, but we're definitely going to pray. I mean to offend with this message. Amen. If I didn't mean to offend, I would have never live streamed it. Show me a pastor with live stream is. Show me a pastor with live stream. Now, now, if I'm going to take the heat for it, I ain't scared of you. I ain't scared of your feeling. I'm the one going to take the heat for what I'm saying. But I'm telling you, this is real. If, if, if people be honest today, you would, you'd be, this room is full of molested people, Amen. full of people that were sexually abused. I would go out on a limb that 90% that of black women have been molested, 90%. But do you know why I know this for, for sure? When we did counseling sessions, we, we, we used to counsel all the time. And most of our counseling was with, with sisters. Not one sister that we counseled with did not tell us she had not been molested. And I've had a lot of counseling. I've been counseling for years. I stopped counseling. Because I do it just with preaching, but when we would talk to them, all of them would say yes, yes. It, and I said, baby, this is like an epidemic. And I began to realize that the home is where people are so more unprotected than when they're in the street. So we got to protect, say protect. protect. Don't be afraid as a parent because you don't want to know the bad things. Ask. My, I, one thing I really loved about my wife, she would always talk to my daughters. She would talk to them sometimes on the level they were on, but she would ask them about Anybody touch that right there? Anybody did that right there? She would give them, she would talk names. Ain't no little cool, cool stuff. Don't be giving them the, don't do that. Say the name. Say what it is. And she would make sure that, you know, anybody ever messed with you? Anybody ever did something to you? She would make sure. It was very important for us to know that. I would watch my sons. I would, now, you know, I, I, I can't be with them 24 hours a day, but I would watch them and make sure they ain't looking, you looking funny, you walking funny, you talking funny. <laughs> I would make sure because I understood it don't take but a second for that to root in their heart 
we're going to raise men and women. We're not going to raise no perversions. Are y'all there? I'm going to tell y'all, some of y'all main problem, it's not that you ain't found the right woman. It's not about the right man. It's about you were sexually violated, and you never got that right. You can go on covering it with money, job, career, education. You can even get in a relationship, but it will not cover that pain. The pain is why you act out, you do certain things, you have certain tendencies. That's got to get healed. It can't be, and, and it's hard for things to get healed that you won't let the light shine on. That means you got to take the band-aid off the sword, let the air hit it so that it can begin to heal. I'm telling you, it's affecting your life. Some of us, some of us men, if we've been molested, we have this insatiable anger because we feel angry about it. We feel like we, we sometimes we even feel like we should have did something to stop it, but we were young, we were boys. That's the whole point about being uncovered. Some of you girls, you begin to hate men. You begin to hate the masculine. You have to understand that, that, the, that, that the blood and the cross, listen, must be applied. It's there for you to be healed, but you gotta apply it. That means you gotta ask for it. Lord, heal me in this area. You gotta acknowledge it. I ain't, I ain't telling you to go tell <clears throat> nobody nothing. I'm saying, start with you and God. Amen. You know what happened to me, Lord, heal me. Don't be like this guy that said, why did you let this happen? No, no, sin made that happen. Amen. The world is, we in a fallen world, with a, it's just not a perfect world. And we were born into bad situations. But that don't mean we gotta carry the baggage of what somebody did to us to make us an eternal victim. I want to be free of that. And it starts by first acknowledging what happened to me and then by learning how to come to the Lord with all my burdens and laying it down, giving it to him. That I'm giving this thing to you. Are y'all there? Lift your hands up. Hallelujah. Now I believe the Holy Spirit wants to hear you this morning, but you have to be honest. Nobody knows what you've been through. Nobody knows where you've been but you. And I would ask you right now to search your heart and anything that the Holy Spirit will bring up memories and times that you felt violated things that happened in your life that abused you even that you've been grown people tried you with homosexuality or lesbianism or any rapes that's gone on in your life it's time for you to come to your God and begin to lay those burdens down you've carried them long enough it's time for you to bring it to the Lord so we're all going to pray together I want you to repeat after me say Father I come to you now with all my mess with all my garbage as messed up as I am I bring all my baggage and my burdens. You know what happened to me. I repent for holding it. I repent for being angry about it. I even repent for unforgiveness. Now right now, in your presence, I lay down all my burdens. I lay down abuse. I lay down molestation. I lay down victimhood and right now I receive your forgiveness I receive your life I receive your blood that cleanses me and makes me new I accept you God I ask you to accept me just as I am because from today I'm yours moment Heal me. Make me what you call for me to be. And I'll serve you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, give the Lord some praise. Come on, give him better praise than that. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah.